Hey there, so we have our 2004 Dodge Neon SRT. Uh, recently, we heard a weird noise in the back, so we checked it out, and turns out that it's the brakes. Uh, what we're gonna do today is we're gonna replace the brake pads and the rotors. Uh, as you can see, I uh, already got it on the lift, and we're gonna have to take the tire out, and then we're just going to go from there. Here are the parts that I'm going to be using for the rake job. Uh, these both are made by Centric Parts. Uh, first off, this is my rotor, Cryostop, cryogenically treated rotors. Uh, I really like this one because it's super easy to install and also it has a black E coating and it's cryogenically treated. And let me show you about that. This is the black E coating. It's looks really nice, black is my favorite color, and it's coated on all the surfaces that the brake pads are not gonna come in contact with. And the reason I like it is because this helps to prevent rusting, so it's not gonna get all ugly looking or whatnot, my car's gonna look really nice. Uh, the reason it says cryo is because it goes through a cryogenic treatment, which means it goes hot and cold, hot and cold, this whole process until the metal composition um, changes and it makes this more tougher. And I like also this because you can order it um, and it gets delivered to your house if it's the same price uh, or cheaper uh, from the rotors that you get at the auto parts store and those won't be as tough as this one. And so I really like this one. And now for the brake pads, these are the, um, also Centric Parts, Posi Quiet, and um, it's premium, made by a ceramic, and uh, the reason I like this one is because since it's ceramic, it creates uh, little dust and it's very quiet. Now they do also have an option for more aggressive brake pads, but those will have a lot more dust and noise. Uh, and also they come with extra hardware so you can replace your old ones. Uh, so now that you've seen this, let's head off and install them. Okay, so as you can see here, the brake pads have all but gone and disappeared. So what happened, you might not see it in the video, the detail, but the rotors have been really scratched up. It's really bad. Uh, normally, you can replace, uh, resurface the rotors. You can take it to a shop, they do it for you. So all you have to do is buy new brake pads. But in this instance, we were gonna get new rotors anyway so we just let this get trashed but normally if you hear noise in the back and it's probably your brakes you better check them out because you're going to save yourself a lot of money so what we're going to do is after this we're going to replace the rotors that are not cross drill and slotted uh, so that's why we let it just go to waste all right so what i have to do first is remove the two caliper bolts in order to remove the caliper Okay, so we're gonna remove the caliper. Okay, now you don't wanna just let it go because this is where the brake fluid comes off, comes through, and if you just let this go, you're just gonna mess this whole thing up. So you don't ever wanna do that. So what we do is we put a hook and you hook it up to the suspension as high as you can. All right, so now I'm gonna take the old rotor out so I can put the new rotor in. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is clean the hub. Uh, we want it as flat as possible uh, so that the rotor can lay flat 
If it doesn't, if, if you don't clean it right, there's a possibility that it does not lay flat when we put in the rotor and that can cause uh, noise when, once you put the new one in. Also, it's very important that when you're cleaning all of this that you don't breathe in the dust because it has asbestos, it's really bad for your lungs, um, and you know, you don't ever really wanna breathe anything bad that comes out of the car. Uh, so I just hold my breath, but if you wanna take precautions, you can wear a face mask, you know, better safe than sorry, but um, anyways, after we clean all this off, you also wanna clean the lug nuts in case uh, any debris gets in here. So we're gonna be doing that right now. All right, so as you can see, the hub is fully clean and ready for the new rotor. Uh, so now we're gonna unbox it. All right, so. This is the new rotor, very clean, very nice. Uh, one thing to notice is that when you get your new rotor, it's covered in oil. The reason being is this is iron, so when they ship it to you, it could rust. So they cover it in oil. So before I put in my new rotor, I always clean it. And I personally clean it with brake cleaner and some paper towels, but I never do it by my car because I don't want the brake cleaner to eat away my paint. So we're going to be doing this right now and then we'll show you the next step. All right, so our rotor is now clean. So now that I have access to this area, what I want to do is clean the surfaces so that the brake pads can move freely because if, if I don't clean it, then there's a chance that there might be some noise when I put them in. So that's what I'm going to do right now. Alright, so now I'm going to remove the old brake pads. I'm also being very careful with these lines as I remove it. So this one's a little tough. There we go. So before I put in my new brake pads, I have to compress the piston. So I have a special tool that's gonna push it in, and so I'm gonna be turning it, in, turning it until it bottoms out. All right, so now we're gonna put the new brake pads in. So this one goes on the bottom. All right, so we got the brake pads in. This bottom one was really hard to put on. We got them both in, and just wanted to show you quickly the difference between the old pads and the new one. See how this one, the surface is like all gone to the point where it started scraping right here. That's what caused the noise. That's pretty interesting to see. And the bottom one, not so much, but you can still see the difference between it and where it started scraping. All right, so now that I got my pads in, we're gonna put the hardware, and it's these little fellows. And there is an orientation to them, but don't worry, if you do it wrong, it won't go in. It doesn't let it go in. So there's only one way it could go in. Now that we put the hardware in, I'm going to put some caliper grease on only the hardware. I'm very careful to not put it anywhere else and the reason that I put it 
on these four sides of the hardware is so that the brake pads can move freely. Basically, I'm putting the loop anywhere that it's gonna slide. So I'm gonna put it right here. Here and then on the back sides too, being very careful, I don't put it anywhere else. And so it's nice, nice and greasy. And I'll put some on the bottom here too. All right, so now it's ready to go in. So I was having some issues getting the caliper in. Turns out this hardware is in the way. See. Every time I try to put it in, it gets stuck. So these top ones I don't need as much as I need the bottom ones. So I'm actually gonna take these out. And boom. Okay, so now I'm gonna put the two caliper bolts in. So now I'm going to torque it to spec. Alright, so now that we got all this done on this side, I'm going to put the tire back in and now work on the other side and then go for a test drive, see how it goes. Alright, that's it my friends. Thanks for tuning in. Remember, if you like the video, hit like and subscribe. Thanks.